Welcome to our next episode of Fandom Family Chats. This is a production of Family Fan Clubs on Facebook. You can find us all over Facebook. You can find us all over social media under Fandom Family Chats. Look us up, get dialed in, get plugged in, and get ready to listen to some crazy people talk crazy stuff. Welcome back to Fandom Family Chats. I'm Tiffany. I'm Eve. And tonight we are talking 911 and 911 Lone Star. Let's start off with OG. Season 6, episode 13 already. Wow. Mixed feelings. Yeah, I had mixed feelings about this episode too. It was interesting the way it started. People were just like dropping like flies on the floor. It's funny. Yeah, it was wild. Like, you know, first, what's his name? Cam Lewis goes down. And then they finally get there, which I felt it was very convenient that all of a sudden, as soon as, you know, they were there, everyone started just like passing out. I was like, oh my god like what is this i was very confused i was like why are these people passing out what's going on yeah it was funny because i saw one of the guys that fainted before he fainted i saw him going like this to one of the other guys in the background and then he dropped him like okay (laughs) you didn't see that coming on oh boy but it was what did they call it tummy tea yeah, something like that. Tell me tea. Guys, if you're going to some special workout, do not drink anything named funny like tummy tea. It's probably not good for you. Just stick with water. Unless you're the 15-year-old girl that is allergic to water, then do not stick with water. <laughs> that was wild. Like, isn't the hair... I mean, I know people need to get their hair cut. Like, I mean... But wouldn't she consider a hair salon a pretty risky place to go to, assuming she knew she was allergic to water? You'd think. I, I, I'm just really, because it's, I'm under the impression that she knew that she was allergic to water. Like this was oh, yeah. a discovery because of how protective her mom was. And well, rightfully so, because. But, yeah, we didn't get that whole story in the beginning. <laughs> Like, I felt bad for it first. Oh, your mom just keeps you locked in the house. You can't go to the mall by yourself. Oh, I see why. (laughs) Maybe you need to stay locked up in the house. You've been making some pretty risky decisions. Even if you weren't allergic to water, like, come on, that's a terrifying way to cut your hair. And I'm using air quotes. Like, I, I don't, I guess it's like burning the hair off. First of all, that place is gonna stink. <laughs> this burnt hair really stinks. Second of all, that's not cutting hair. That's literally just burning your hair off. And it's not safe. Isn't gonna work. And I'm it was confused. Um, and it was being live streamed too. It's like I I don't I she she had the right idea to, to back out of that. Like that part was smart, but maybe she just shouldn't have gone in the first place. And when she, and like when the mom got there, I was so confused by the mom because like she got there and she was like, oh, what happened? Like, I'd be freaking out. Like, how dare you do this? You're allergic to water. Like, this is ridiculously unsafe. And the mom was just like hearing her out. And she's like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm like, lady, (laughs) look at your kid. This is not okay. I didn't realize that was like an actual real allergy yeah i like i know that it's a thing obviously it's really rare but i don't like how do you clean yourself exactly that's what i was wondering like like, because i mean all of those like hives or welts or whatever they were happened from the sprinklers so obviously the same must happen if she tries to take a shower or you know a bath where she's sitting in the water can she drink water also because if not she's gotta get dehydrated i think from what i from the little i know about this condition i think it's specifically like skin contact like the water and 
like water inside your body is okay maybe i don't know if you have this allergy or you know what this is like let us know because I don't know. It's it, it's I'm very curious. I just want to know how she takes a shower. Like I don't know why that's important to me. I'm just really curious. I that I have not thought about anything else since I've watched that. <laughs> I'm like, how does she get clean? How does she wash her hair? I don't understand. Like so many things you do involves water. And for the record, yes, we do understand. She's a fictional character, and this is a TV show. But this is like said these calls are based off real calls. But these are obviously like real things. Like, you know, Ryan Murphy bases these off like real calls. So it has to come from somewhere. Mm -hmm. I am really fascinated to know where they got the um that date night gone wrong story from because oh boy. Poor woman. I felt bad for her for so many reasons. And I look, well, then like they heard the vibrating. They were like, it's coming from inside the house. <laughs> and the whole time thinking, this poor woman, like, can you please just get her the heck out of this house into the hospital? Like, no more hanging around talking about how it happened. Like, I think she's embarrassed enough. When Hen said it moved inside her bladder. Oh, Ooh, God. That sounds crazy so painful oh my god how does that even happen i'm squirming right now like oh and then poor buck was there you know just doing math in his head i was very confused by that storyline yeah because all of a sudden i remember i was watching it and i texted the group chat i was like so buck can math now like i like it's, it's they make it seem like it's some kind of after effect from his coma or something which I don't know I guess that's a thing that can happen but it's been a couple episodes since then so why is it coming up now yes that was weird I mean like you think fun, it would happen right away like it's a fun storyline like I, I really enjoyed it I thought it was really funny but it just came out of nowhere like that almost like they were thinking hmm we have 20 minutes left to fill this with something i know buck is really good at math let's go with that <laughs> i do like how christopher was trying to get him to do his homework for him oh well, smart kid <laughs> he's what 11 12 however old he is and his friend suddenly has like this math superpower or whatever obviously you're gonna try to make him do your homework for you i definitely would i would take full advantage of that situation oh i just have to do my taxes unless that's a whole different kind of math that he can't do <laughs> it's true i don't think taxes is real math i think that's completely like made up math. yeah it definitely is made up math because i don't understand any of the stuff on those papers the uh, low stakes <laughs> game of poker. <laughs> that was funny. Yeah, I was watching it and I was like, of course Eddie knows about a low stakes poker game somewhere in LA. I, I'm not, I'm still not sure how I feel about it. I feel like most of the time, but like Eddie is the voice of reason to Buck's, you know, complete craziness. So it's just interesting that Eddie was the one who was like, hey, let's take full advantage of these math superpowers and go to a low stakes poker game. Doesn't that sound like fun? <laughs> like, no, no, no. This is a buck idea and you're supposed to talk him out of it. But his face when he saw the prize was actual stakes was just priceless. Who's Who was there? Who were the captains? They looked like people that we'd never seen before. Like, just, like, filler people. They I made could... it seem like we knew them. And I think it was just because of what they were wearing and how they were dressed that I'm not used to seeing them as I... who they actually are. I don't know. I thought that if they were just made out to be, like, you know, higher-ups in the department. Could be. 
but I didn't recognize who they were. I thought it would have been more interesting if these were people that we actually knew and we would have been like, oh my gosh, why are all these people here in the same room? Like that would have been really interesting. Well, she mentioned that there were three from the 126 there. So maybe they're from other fire stations. They have to be. But the thing with um 911 is we don't know anything about any other fire stations. Like on... Well, you don't watch any of the other <laughs> medical dramas that the rest of us watch. But like on um, Chicago Fire, it's like we see every once in a while, like people who are from other stations. Not so much on Station 19, I think. But like on here, on 911, it's really solely focused on the one house. And we never really see people from other houses like there are no other captains or anything in that universe no not i mean not unless there's like a big call where they need multiple stations to go into but that's rare i mean at the very beginning of um lone at the very beginning of lone star they had that whole thing with um what's his name that friend of judd's billy billy yeah you know, I thought that was his name, but then I also thought it could have been the actor's name, so I wasn't sure. But at the very beginning of Lone Star, they had Billy, who was kind of, you know, higher up in the department. But, you know, since he's on Fire Country now, I guess, you know, he's, they kind of dropped that. But I loved Buck and Christopher baking cookies at the end. I was for certain waiting for buck to be like wait a minute i don't know math anymore i know that's exactly what i thought when he was like um let's just get a new recipe and he he was like i think that'll be like 4.72 cups i'm like that's great math buck but that's not quite how baking works baking is a different beast altogether i mean math can be helpful but you know that's what calculators are for and our teachers growing up told us we wouldn't have calculators handy. Come huh. on. Yeah, but heck, even watches have calculators on them now. You don't even need a calculator. Cal- bleh, calculator. You can just yell. Um, okay, good. I don't have an Alexa. You can just yell at Alexa to tell you the answer. You know what? I like these headphones now because every time Amanda yells at her Alexa, mine won't freak out. <laughs> Oh, see, that's why you need to keep wearing them so your Alexa doesn't start flipping out on you. It does. Every time she commands it to do something, mine's like, can't do that. No one's talking to you. Quiet. No one cares, no one cares what you think. I did like the uh, the baking cookies, but poor his poor sister Maddie did not get the uh, fun baking experience. She did get some muffins, though, from her crazy pants neighbor. I'm not going to eat anything that someone bakes who, like, I've never met before in my entire life. Mm -mm. Unless, I, I don't know, unless it's like a potluck I've been invited to by someone I know really well. I mean, that might be okay. But some strange lady shows up at your house Obviously, she had no idea who this lady is, never seen her in her life, because as we learn later, she doesn't even live in the neighborhood. She wasn't even who she said she was. So I feel like, I feel like Maddie should be smarter than this. Like, I'm under the assumption that she actually, like, consumed the muffins. I would have been like, oh, thank you very much, and tossed them right in the trash. Like, you don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure. I saw her walk out the door with them. And then Jim had said they washed the plate, but I'm just like, y'all threw those away, right? I'm judging hard if you didn't. It was really funny when Maddie went to the neighbor's house and knocked on the door. She's like, I'm Wanda Sykes. Um, yeah. she was you like, look well, different. <laughs> like, you are not the same Wanda Sykes I met yesterday. <laughs> Mm-mm. No. 
Carol Sykes. Wanda Sykes is the comedian. What did I say Wanda Sykes? <laughs> I first was like, why does her name sound so familiar? Carol? Carol Sykes. Sorry, guys. We're talking about Carol Sykes. We promise we watched the episode. <laughs> I love Wanda Sykes. I watch her comedy all the time. She's so hilarious. Oh, I love her. Sadly, she was not in this episode, though. We're talking about Carol Sykes. But yeah, I saw her. I and like she opened the door. I was like, um, you look different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're not the same person. <laughs> Definitely not. I love how Bobby was just after Tim mentioned it to him, Bobby was just like, we know what to do. <laughs> and it's funny. He told him exactly what he thought it was. <laughs> and then when they sat down together, Athena's like, Yeah, that's probably what this is. <laughs> Well, she had to give her professional stamp of approval on it. Were you really concerned about that little boy, though? Yes. Because I I was so worried. I thought that this was like a little boy that she'd kidnapped. So I was a little confused why he seemed so calm. Because normally, like, I, well... On TV shows, anyway. I've only seen children kidnapped on TV shows. But, um, no, I, I'm very concerned. <laughs> I felt like he, I don't know, if he was acting kind of odd. I was like, he looks pretty okay for a kid who's been kidnapped. Right. Luckily, it turned out to be her nephew. So she was not going to harm the kid, thank goodness. But, Oh my gosh, what a wacky way to lead a, a a coupon scam. Of all things, coupons. I mean, I've watched, um, gosh, what's that show? Extreme Couponers. <laughs> Holy cow, those people go insane over these coupon scams. Mm-hmm. These coupon things. But... I don't know. I was, I'm still really confused about the whole thing. So she put, she used the address of Chim and Maddie's house to get more coupons because at the time she thought it was abandoned. She was getting her money orders sent there from the people she was sending the coupons to. She didn't want to send the money orders to her own house because apparently that's how she got caught last time. So she was sending them to their house because she thought it was abandoned still. She didn't realize it was bought by somebody because she was in jail. I guess she didn't case out the house first before she gave people the address. (laughs) I was pretty confused. Like when she started rifling through their mail, I was like, okay, so she delivers mysterious muffins. Then she kidnaps a kid and now she's rifling through their mail. Like (laughs) what do these three things have in common? I don't, I don't get it. Yeah, I was really confused when she started going through the mail. Because um, 911 does this all the time where they'll be like, yeah, we definitely know what's going on here. And then we're like, we don't. <laughs> and then <clears throat> weird things start happening. And then they just explain it like after the fact. I'm like, I get it. We need the dramatic effect. But I felt really left out that nobody told me what was going on. Like Maddie knew and Chim knew and Bobby knew. And I didn't get to know. <laughs> that was very rude. We don't like being on the outside. We want to watch it while we already know it. Thank you. I was excited to see more of Denny this episode and finally get you know, a little bit more of his dad. Oh gosh. I was I'm so excited that it's finally going somewhere other than just secret conversations with his dad yeah because that was just real creepy like just real creepy i still have a really bad feeling about this guy because i know you said it in past episodes like he's the grown-up here obviously denny wants a relationship with his dad and he's going to hide it because he's a kid and he's going to get in trouble with his mom's but this guy, like, he's the grown-up. Like, he should know better. Be like, he hey, should. you know, Denny's been reaching out to me. I'd like to get to know him. Talk amongst yourselves. Let me know. Like, like we get the kid. Probably didn't realize that this was the worst way he could have gone about it. 
but the adult definitely should have realized that. What a way for Hen and Karen to find out about it. First of all, what's his name again? Denny's dad? Uh, Nathaniel. Nathaniel's. Like, what a way, what a terrible way for them to find out about Nathaniel. Because, well, first of all, Hen's working. Karen's freaking out because he's not on the school bus. And all of a sudden, Hen sees him hanging out at the hospital. Yeah, because she's like, it's okay, I've got him. He's here. He's here? Here where? <laughs> and then she just hangs up on her. I'm like, <laughs> you can't do that. You just what? told your wife that you came across your child that you shared together at your work, which can be dangerous. <laughs> oh, yeah, if I were Karen, I would have been pissed. Oh, I would have been so mad. It's like, no, 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 no. You say, hold on a second. What were you thinking? <laughs> And poor Karen was looking around like, what is going on? I would have been just so mad at him. I'm glad he finally came clean, though, because, I mean, that was the stressful situation. The sad thing, though, is that, like, how much longer would this have carried on if they hadn't gone into that accident? Mm-hmm. Yep, probably for a while. I love Grammy this episode. She totally saved the day. She did. She always does. I love her relationship with Denny. And I don't know how, but they chose the most perfect actress for that role because her and Hen looked like they could be related. Oh, definitely. When the first time we saw her, I like poured over their um, bios because I was convinced they had to be related. Yeah. I don't know how. I'd settle for cousins. That would be okay too, but they have to be related. They definitely look like... They even like have the same mannerisms and yeah like the same mannerisms and the way they talk it's yes maybe they're just really really good actors yeah <laughs> great casting and amazing actors <laughs> but i love i love her relationship with denny they're just so sweet together and she always has the best advice i want her as my grammy <laughs> yeah i was sitting there listening to her like talk to to denny i was like this is such great advice. And then I'm sitting there thinking, I could use her advice. She's not real. <laughs> you can't she cut the crust off his sandwich for him. I cut the crust off my daughter's sandwich. And then I end up just eating the crust while she eats the sandwich. So the crust is the best part. So I mean she's missing out. Well, that's all I get to eat. So I don't I don't know. <laughs> you don't know any different. <laughs> To me, the crust is always the best part because it's all I got. I did think it was such a great idea for Tony to kind of be the middleman and sit in, be the one to sit in the room with Denny while he visited his dad. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, it they made it really clear, like, they're, we're not doing this for you. We're doing this for Denny. And in order to make him comfortable, like, there was no way that either one of them could sit in the room with and you know facilitate this without there being too much tension that would have been too stressful on them and it just would have been awkward to sit in there knowing that you're his parents but yet here's someone who's also a father to him it's just it would have been weird for them i think grammy was definitely a good choice for sure I thought I thought it was funny though, like when they walked into the room and Denny's like goes over to his dad and Tony and Grammy just takes a seat and she's just hanging out. <laughs> I'm just like, gonna sit here, don't mind me, guys. It was a totally normal visit. I'm just hanging out. We're having a great time. This is a good episode. I liked it. I want I did want to slap Nathaniel across the face when he was saying you know, this has been eating me up inside. I feel so bad. It's like, if you felt so bad, why didn't you say anything? That might have fixed that for you. Yeah. I don't think you felt that bad. Stop being a liar. That might help I bet you, you feel a lot worse sitting in that hospital bed right now, though. I hope you feel like crap now. <laughs> in every way possible. How did he get so beat up and Denny doesn't have a scratch on him? 
it because yeah they made it sound like it was a really minor accident he but, looked pretty bad sitting in that bed yeah so, so what kind of accident was this right because even if they were going across an intersection they were like t-boned or something like denny would have had some kind of feeling, at least he just walked right on in there he was walking around hey mom here i am <laughs> and he's like oh crap my mom. <laughs> Like, oh, now I need a cover story about why I'm at the hospital. I was not planning for this. Did you watch that preview for next week? Holy mo- I There was a lot going on in there. First, it seemed kind of seemed interesting and humorous. It's like the bodybuilder and like the pop pop muscle effort. Like I thought that it was gonna be like I thought it was gonna be like a small thing like they usually do. And then and then it looks like things are about to get heated and Athena has to jump in. So it's going to be real. And that was all we got of the preview. So I wonder if it's going to be some huge storyline. And that's what they're focusing on next week. Yeah, because they didn't give us anything else. Nothing for anybody. I'm yeah. just really confused because it looked like just stuff pouring out of his muscle. It's almost like somebody like just poked him with a needle and now he's like spurting what was it i don't oh. know what it was oh. I don't like it. we'll find out next week yeah. whatever it is those other bodybuilders do not like that he had it or no. it was leaking i don't know they didn't like something about it they seemed a little upset or a lot upset a lot upset yeah I don't know how Athena is going to fare against a bunch of bodybuilders. But you know what? I'd still put my money on Athena. Well, I I was going to say the same thing. I, I still put my money on Athena every time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She's got a very demanding demeanor to her. She knows how to control the room. Oh, yeah. Quickly. <laughs> that is all for OG. Let's jump into 911 Lone Star. Wait, episode 12. What was OG? Episode 13. I thought the break was to get them caught up to each other. Never mind. Anyways. Well, they're almost caught up to each other. They're maybe, almost caught up. I don't know. Maybe. It got you closer. I don't know. Maybe OG has like one more break coming up. Wow. This episode. Carlos dropped the big bomb this week. Last but, week it was Wyatt. This week it was Carlos. But not the kind of bomb that uh, Tiffany enjoys. No. No explosions. Although TK was pretty bad. I think TK was really confused. Right? Also, what? I was really confused because I'm sitting there thinking I'm no expert, but isn't this maybe something you talk about before you decide to get married? I could have swore they had this conversation because have they really not talked about kids before? Like I could have swore they've had this conversation. It's like, I don't know. Like it seemed like Carlos or not Carlos, sorry. It seemed like TK was really under the impression that Carlos just wanted kids because of how great he is with kids. But you can't just assume stuff like that. I love kids. That's what my career is. But uh uh-uh, I don't want to raise kids. <laughs> if they turn out to be like little shits, like I don't want that to be my fault. <laughs> I I loved the interviews they did for the wedding officiants. They had some unique selections there. Oh yeah, like they had quite I don't know. They had quite a nice selection. They had the psychic with 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 the auras and everything. And I was like, this feels a little kooky, but I don't know. Like, if, if you're, in, I, I feel like oh, I feel like Owen would have been like, we're hiring her. I'm all the way on board with this one. Right? He so would. I love like Carlos' response to her though. She's like, you have the gift too. No, I just know the color wheel. <laughs> It can't be that hard. I went to kindergarten art class. I know what a color <laughs> is. 
right? And then there was the um, was it a priest or or was it a minister or or he had a collar on, didn't he? I think so. See, I was confused because he had a collar, which I thought was what which is what I thought only priests wear, but then he called himself like a minister or a pastor or something. Yeah, I think he did say minister or reverend. Was did he say reverend? Maybe it was reverend. I don't know. I just remember being really confused because he was wearing the collar, but he didn't call himself a priest. Mm -mm. Yeah, I thought priests were the only ones that wore those too. Yeah, I thought like as soon as I saw that collar, I was like, um, I'm gonna go ahead and put it out there for some reason i have a feeling that he might not be a great fit for for this particular wedding because he was talking mm -hmm. about what was it a test like a test or like a class they had to take or something no that was the that was the rabbi was that the rabbi yeah because he thought that carlos was converting so oh, he wanted God. to get him en enrolled in courses to convert <laughs> and they're just like whoa did not mention that part see because it was like they kept switching between all of them so i started like my, my brain started to spin a little so i couldn't really keep them straight but yeah I, I forget which one it was that said they were gonna be burning in hell together was that the the reverend one Oh, that had to have been the reverend. Like the the the, the hippy dippy Ara girl wouldn't have said that, no. and that's also not a Jewish thing. It's true. It's true. It had to be that guy. <laughs> okay, we have narrowed it down. <laughs> yeah, I was watching all of this, and I was like, "So, which one are they gonna pick?" Like, I don't think they're gonna go with the priest or the minister, whatever the heck he was. I don't think they're going that way. It's like personally, I would like to see um the wedding officiated by the Aura girl. <laughs> yeah, I think maybe they're just gonna use Paul because she think, was a little bit out there. You know, while they were doing all of this, I was thinking, it's like, why are they not just asking someone to like like one of their friends to just get ordained and then do it for them? That's the way to do it. Or Paul, so that he was ordained, I was like, oh, maybe Owen can get ordained and he can marry them. Oh. oh. Can you imagine that ceremony? I could, and it would be very, very funny. I mean, for us watching, maybe for not us, exactly. PK and Carlos. Maybe for literally everyone else, it would be amusing. Yeah. Only everyone else. Definitely not them. No. Yeah, they would hate that. I, I liked how they finally solved their issue, though, and Carlos brought home Lou, too. He was cute. Until he, got he was gone. Again. He was cute for a whole two seconds, and bye-bye, lizard. Like, how does a lizard... It's a bearded dragon, right? Like, are they... Like best creatures because I mean they turned away for like a couple of seconds and then they looked back and he was like completely gone to the point where like they couldn't see him anywhere yes google google are bearded dragons fast according to the independent while they are sedentary for the most part bearded dragons can reach speeds of up to nine miles per hour nine miles per hour that, that's, wow well that's pretty fast so I guess he what did run away <laughs> that's actually pretty fast for a little reptile i did not realize he could go that fast wow i need to i i really want to see a bearded dragon run nine miles per hour now right i want to see that you knew well folks you learn something new every day i kind of want a bearded dragon i think they're cute they're okay. very they're very beautiful animals they are. Very I, just, cool I think it might scare me <laughs> When I hold it. <laughs> and then watching them peel might be a little, or what is it called? Shed. Shed? Is Malt? It Malt? Wait, that sounds like a milkshake. <laughs> what so, do they do? The thing they do with their skin, like that, that would be weird to watch. <laughs> yeah, it would. It really would. So, so no bearded dragon for you? 
I don't know. I'm just going to stick with the cats. I think that's a safe choice. I like, I like my cats. Although my cats are very fat and don't really do much. So I'm really glad that they found a way to, you know, they got to a good place. So TK and Carlos were left off in a good place. Um, the uh, Our favorite greedy couple is not so lucky, though. I gotta say, I really enjoyed that watching this whole story now, play out with them karma is a you know what and these people karma got them good yeah that that was i felt really good to watch honestly marjan definitely uh got her payback there and that felt good i loved when they were talking about like the breathing mask there, we could give you a breathing mask to help you yes do that please like well only if it's medically necessary tommy nope can't think of a reason not a one <laughs> and the looks on their faces when it turned out that marjan was the equipment manager so as soon as he said oh i guess that's the decision of the equipment manager i was like oh my god it's marjan <laughs> their faces as soon as they realize that priceless they're professionals they weren't going to let these people suffer like i was pretty sure they were going to give them the breathing masks no matter what but they were definitely making them sit there and <laughs> hey farmers do that it wasn't you know like covering their faces completely so, so it, fine. it was just up to their chin exactly we're fine you're just being big babies the video i love that that was very smart making them do that video especially for all of her followers anybody I... that was scammed by their what is it their uh what's the word i'm looking for go fund me that's it by their go fund me I, I'm not sure if it was because they had just been rescued from, you know, a, a pile of crap, but they looked like they were in physical pain when they were talking about how grateful they were to Austin Fire Department for their safe rescue. Like, they looked like they were in physical pain saying that, and it was very amusing. That pregnant woman when <laughs> the guy made the 911 call and he said she came in like a wrecking ball she came like so hard oh, oh my god that that was funny i love that woman because i would have probably done the same thing I, at I seven months her. pregnant i love her even more once we found out who her husband was right oh i was suspecting it I just, as soon as they were waiting to the very end of show, I'm like, I know it. Because they ended on a good note on that date. And something's fishy about him. I don't trust him. I knew it. See, I knew that he was going to turn out to be no good. I didn't quite make the connection when we saw our wrecking ball girl. But as soon as he came out, I was like, No. <laughs> didn't even use his real name gosh i wonder what what fake name he gave the hotel and the other woman too how many names does he have chances are well i mean he had he went on the date with marjan he has the girlfriend at the hotel he's got the pregnant wife i mean he's gotta have more Poor marjan all those dates oh my god could they have chosen worse men i mean <laughs> Where did they find these guys? First of all, no, never mind, because Owen was helping her. Oh, God. Yeah, that's that. Which I think was her first mistake. Also, another mistake was um, letting Mateo and Nancy go, like, double date with her because she gave the code word popcorn. He's like, You want popcorn now? Here? Here? Okay. Nancy was like, babe, what why, why don't you go find out? Go. <laughs> oh, Mateo. He's just making 
bro friends. So clueless. So much of the time. But it's okay because we love him so much. We do. He's just the last guy to be clued in about anything. Like everyone's clued in on it's not even a secret like everyone else is clued in and there's Mateo like huh what I don't get it what he's he's so dumb but so sweet (laughs) he's dumb but not like in like a classically like idiotic kind of way just he's just not very street smart Mm. no not at all I really hope Marshawn's done with dating though because those choices if that's out there, I'd rather be single. <laughs> well, I mean, she lucked out at the end, finding out that her PT is uh, Muslim. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. I didn't see that coming. I mean, I, I guess I, he explained why, because well, I'm I at saw, work. I saw the part about her, about them eventually dating. Like, that part I saw coming. But the him being Muslim, I was like, Oh no, it's too perfect. The last time something was too perfect, we had a woman drive a wrecking ball through the uh, through a hotel. But I think it's a winner because it's her real life guy. So it's true. I hope he sticks around. They keep finding a way to bring uh, Jennifer Love Hewitt's husband back, you know, through like dream sequence. And- <laughs> See, I like them bringing their significant other, their real life significant others onto the show, but I have mixed feelings about Jennifer Love Hewitt just because of what a terrible character that is. Props to the act, props to the actor because I mean, first of all, that has to be a really rough storyline to do with your real life spouse. But no, I was not. Maybe thankful. that. Maybe that's a good thing, though, because maybe you'll feel more comfortable actually playing it out with someone you know really well, as opposed to a stranger. That's also true, yeah. Maybe that was one of the reasons they brought him on. He did a fantastic job playing crazy. He played creep and crazy really well, so. Very well. He's obviously a talented actor, so. Mm -hmm. I'm excited to see where this thing goes with Marjan and Joe. I forget his name. Y- Yusef? I think that's what they said. Yusef? Something like that. I think I, call him Joe. I just want her to be done with this dating because that was just really, really painful. I liked the um that one guy up until he ju- uh, up until he judged her for being a Hufflepuff. Right? I was I like this is gonna work. I was like, uh, no. Up until that part, he was great. What is wrong with being a hustle? That was really confusing, though, because I was on the same page as Marjan, where he, he was like, what house are you? And she was like, we're all from the one to six. Like, <laughs> yeah, we're all at the same firehouse. And then as soon as I came out of her mouth, I was like, oh, I don't think that's what he meant. <laughs> he looked that rather confused by that uh answer yeah he is weird too like i like harry potter as much as the next guy but you don't judge people based on what house they'd be in let's just say there is a reason that these guys were on uh online dating sites i don't know maybe and you know occasionally you do meet really great guys online dating but i think there's a specific (laughs) reason why these specific guys were still dating and not in relationships yeah i i only tried online dating once and it wasn't for me it just sounds scary to me like i i I would be terrified that i'd end up like with my mouth duct taped in the back of someone's trunk i didn't make it that far mine hooked me up with my cousin and then i i immediately canceled my subscription to the app Um, yeah i i would do that too (laughs) that was a good call Yeah, that was the low point in life. Very, very low. Wow, that does not typically happen in real life. That's something that happens on comedies. Yeah, I I had just gotten 
divorce and I was kind of excited to try online dating. Not that way though. I was not excited after about two days in and that was my recommendation. I won't be using you anymore. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you for trying, but I am done now. Yep. Free subscription? I don't care. Goodbye. So, well, I mean, speaking of awkward encounters, as awkward as that was, um, preview for next week? Yeah. It's uh, very chilling. I'm going to say it again. Of course it's Owen. Owen. <laughs> was involved with a woman in an open in an open marriage why we knew she was too good to be true that there had to be something wrong with her we found why do these things always happen to open i know poor owen it's like they, they think hmm we've got this really crazy storyline this is real good you know we'll just toss it to owen he can handle it i mean and he 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 does them so well He plays the stupid part so perfectly. (laughs) Good job, Rob Lowe. Like, I don't know if, I don't know what's going on in your real life, but you're really good at, at, you know, playing a fool. It looks like it's going to be a really good episode. That's really all they gave us was uh, that and Kendra meeting her husband. And then her husband froze himself cryogenic chamber i'm glad you put that in writing because i would not have been able to pronounce that word otherwise who has a cryogenic chamber just chilling in their house probably the same people that donates tens of thousands of dollars like two or three times yeah for sex i mean charity (laughs) charity (laughs) if you get the chance with rob lowe i'd pay him too i mean i don't have however many thousand dollars that uh Lindsay had because i don't know her name here (laughs) kendra kendra you know i don't care how many times i hear her name she's just gonna have to be Lindsay from here on out i had to rewatch the trailer actually because it's the first time i forgot it and missed when they said it and i started typing Lindsay, and i'm like that is not her name that is not oh. what I said. Nope. I had to go back and listen again. Yeah, I just always know her as Lindsay for so long. I thought that was, like, the actress's name, too. It's not. It's Michaela. <laughs> I always called her Lindsay. <laughs> I'm really excited to see that. Yeah. It's going to be real dramatic. I'm excited. Yes. And I love her. She's such a good actress. Oh, yeah. I mean, I hated her on 911, but only because of the part she played. You mean on... What when did she, I say? You said you hated her here on 911. I hated her on One Tree Hill because of the part she played. You know, it's the One Tree Hill 911, you know, too many ones. It's confusing. They keep bringing all these One Tree Hill people onto this show. So now I'm getting all confused. It's not just One Tree Hill people, but One Tree Hill people that we hate. Because, um, what's her name? Amanda Shul. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I had a really bad flashback. I was like, you stay away from that FBI lady. She's going to kill you. She was doomed from the start. Yeah. Well, everything ended up just fine there. Hopefully next week ends up okay with her husband. Yeah, hopefully everything ends up great here too. <laughs> but, oh, we will find out next week. That's all we have for tonight, guys. We talked about 911 and Lone Star, but don't forget to check out our socials and our Facebook, 911 911 Lone Star. Also, tune in next week for more episodes, Sundays, of course, or our Fox Nights. OG 911 and Lone Star. And it used to be the resident, but the resident is no more. And Tuesday nights is our NBC night where we talk about all three Chicago shows. And Wednesday nights are our ABC nights where we dig into Grey's Anatomy and Station 19. We will see you real soon, guys. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye. Bye. Loving our content? Subscribe to our YouTube channel. And don't forget to share our podcast with your family and friends. We want to continue the conversation with you. 
You can find us on Instagram, Twitter, or TikTok under Fan and Family Chats, or one of our ever-growing Facebook groups by searching Family Fan Club. We've also launched a website, familyfanclub2021 at wixsite.com. You can email us there and keep checking it for announcements and merch coming soon. And of course, be sure to tune in every week for new episodes discussing all your favorite shows.